Hey guys, this is Drew with Akusha Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be talking about the differences between a coin dealer and a coin collector when they're hunting for coins. Let's get started. There's going to be a photo that pops up to the left of me showing you guys something that we have in the works. Uh, comment down below what you guys think it is. I kind of gave a sneak peek about it a few videos back, so if you guys want to watch that one, it'll be at the top of your screen. There are two ways to approach buying coins, um, and from the collector's kind of perspective, um, when you approach buying coins, you say, I need this certain date, I need this certain grade, I need this certain coin for my collection to fill its slot, but for me as a dealer, I approach a coin as what is the best value, what is the the most affordable coin that I can get and that has the nicest eye appeal, the most originality. And that's something that I often look for when I'm buying and sourcing for stuff uh, for you guys on the website or for other things like that. Um, but that, I also do that with my coin collecting. Um, when I started my Buffalo set, which is what we're going to talk about today, um, I, I started buying the set because I thought the coins were undervalued. I thought that uh, dealers didn't think that toned buffaloes had any value and I also wanted to get the best deal I could and of course the major plus when buying uh, nice coins for the cheapest that you can is that you can have more money to invest in the coin collecting that you're trying to pursue so the less I spend on my own collection finding the best coins the more coins I can buy for my collection but I can also find more coins to source for other people um, we all live on a budget, we all live on, uh, you know, we can't spend all the money in the world on what we enjoy. And so, when you approach it as, you know, the financial kind of aspect of the coin, rather than the, I need this coin uh, for my collection, um, it kind of changes the game. Um, and that is the difference between coin dealers and kind of coin collectors. And disclaimer, this isn't for, like I said, this isn't for every coin collector, this isn't for every coin dealer. I'm just saying uh, there is that kind of difference between um, me hunting that deal, me hunting for any coin that has a nice eye appeal, nice color as a deal for inventory or as a deal for uh, a collection. Up first, I wanted to show you guys this beautiful 1929S Buffalo Nickel, graded MS63 by PCGS. Um, it's held in a nice OGH holder. It also has some beautiful blues, kind of yellows and oranges on the obverse. And when you flip it over, it's got more of a stronger strike on the obverse, or on the reverse instead of the obverse, which is kind of a downside to the coin. Uh, but the cool part about this coin is that I actually bought it on eBay, and here are the crappy photos that the seller had. So when I received it in hand, I was very pleased. Um, you can kind of tell the difference between my video and their photos. So always a good day to pick up a coin like this. Up next, I wanted to show you guys this beautiful 1937 Buffalo Nickel uh, graded MS66 by NGC. Um, the luster on this coin is phenomenal. Um, the, the, it has some nice blue and purples on the obverse. And then when you flip it over to the reverse, um, it also has that nice blue on there as well. Um, the thing that I love about this coin is, like I said, the luster is very strong, but the strike is also strong as well. I see them giving this a CAC sticker just because of those qualities, and I'm looking forward to seeing what CAC says about this coin. Here's an interesting coin. This coin really uh, got me started in picking up Buffalo Nickels for the collection. Um, I actually found this one at Grapevine. Um, it has really nice orange and purple on the obverse. Um, and also, you know, I, I enjoy the coin just because it has a really nice strong detail. Um, and CAC actually approved this coin. So they did agree with me on the detail and the strike. And then when you flip it over, it's got that orange still on there. And then when you're looking towards the back leg and also the head, you can kind of see a little bit of purple and blue uh, popping out there. Um, I enjoyed this coin a lot just because it was very affordable. It was like 65 bucks, which was gray sheet. Um, and the coin, I mean, I just love the color on it. And I'm very thankful for this coin. Um, next up is this 1937D. Uh, Buffalo Nickel Grade MS65 by NGC. The reason why I like this coin a lot is because it has like this almost bullseye toning to it. Um, you can kind of see that brown out outside on the rim there, and then you can kind of see the blue kind of overarching that, and then there's kind of like a red dot in the center on the obverse. Um, 
and the luster also is pretty strong on this coin which is nice um, and you kind of see the same trend on the reverse as well um, the major flaw with this coin is be, is actually scratched um, it got a big scratch from another coin hitting it it isn't like a bad scratch that would hurt the grade um, but I do not know if CAC would approve this coin not really a big issue for me but Overall, I really do enjoy it just because it has that nice appealing luster to it. Are you guys enjoying today's video so far? If you are, make sure to hit that like button. Uh, comment which buffalo uh, that you like down below. Um, we have a few more to show you guys, so subscribe uh, for more videos that are coming out soon. We got a whole bunch of good things coming and we can't wait to experience them with you. Since we are on the topic of buffalo nickels, I wanted to introduce kind of an interesting topic about them. Um, it said the first Buffalo Nickels were struck um, on February 22nd of 1913. They were unofficially introduced into the limited circulation at the groundbreaking ceremony for the National American Indian Memorial in Staten Island, New York. Uh, 40 of these new Buffalo Nickels uh, were sent to the ceremony to be distributed uh, by President Taft uh, to the attending Native American chiefs. Uh, despite the groundbreaking uh, ceremony, the National American Indian Memorial was never actually built. Something else that was interesting that they figured out about the Buffalo Nickels was that um, they said that the dyes actually wore out three times faster uh, than their predecessor, uh, the Liberty V Nickel. Um, so when you actually do find a coin um, and you like it, sometimes the strike just isn't uh, what it appears to be. It feels like it's a little bit weaker. Um, and when you actually see that, it's because um, dyes wore out just so easily uh, with this series just because of how busy it was. So that's kind of something that's interesting uh, to realize as well with the Buffalo Nickel. Here's another attractive coin uh, to take a look at. This is a little bit of a tougher date actually. This is a 1930S uh, Buffalo Nickel graded MS64 by NGC. The reason why I enjoy this coin is because it has a very interesting color progression on the obverse. As you can see it has this really interesting green in the hair then it kind of trickles down to a blue across the face and then right on the chin there's a nice little orange there uh, the major issue which CEC didn't like the coin too much uh, was it has those dots kind of right behind the head on the obverse uh, but when you flip over the coin it has a nice little blue hue to it um, I know that CEC didn't approve it which is okay but overall the coin is nice for the grade um, for me and I do like the color. We found this one at the Tennessee show and bought it, I think, $10 over gray sheet. So not a bad day uh, to buy this coin. And on a separate note, when we're talking about these coins, just realize that most of these coins I purchased personally by looking at them in hand. And I bought them super close to gray sheet. I think most of these are bought within gray sheet, like, you know, a few bucks within gray sheet. And, um, you know, they're just stunners. I wanted to show you guys this buffalo nickel that I ended up holding in hand actually and I ended up passing on a while back before I even picked up buffalo nickels. Um, the guy didn't have a too, too good of a light at his table and then I didn't actually end up buying it um, and I ended up regretting that so so much. So now I kind of take my time and I also use my flashlight on my phone to drag across coins that I see in cases just because you don't know whenever uh, you know a nice coin might jump out at you. So use that tip when you're at a coin show because you could find some decent coins like this for a great price. Last but not least, I wanted to show you guys one of my favorite buffaloes of the whole collection. I ended up spending uh, a little bit extra on this coin, not nothing too crazy, like 100 bucks or something. But as you can tell from the video, this color on this coin is stellar. Um, the True View can't even pick it up that well. Um, you, can, you can just see the color coming across the date all the way in the bottom and it goes actually all the way around his head. Um, it's just the coin is immaculate. Um, I ended up buying this coin and it actually was a D over D. Um, you can actually see it by the true view that I post uh, with this video. Um, you know this coin just hit so many great things for me. Um, the color like I said was nice. Um, the luster is actually very strong as well and that D over D kind of surprised me and you know nothing to complain about. Understanding this about the collection that we've assembled so far is that uh, you know we only have a few coins here but we have a long road to go on as well um, you know and I'm so passionate about kind of picking these up that um, I wanted to share this with you guys and I also you know just wanted to say that 
there's all these coins out there for you guys to pick up as well. And I'm looking forward to showing you guys more things like this in the future. So a little bit off topic, which is going to end our video today. This is an 1883 O Morgan dollar we actually found on eBay. Um, and the thing that I enjoy about this coin is the color progression coming down the obverse. And you can see that orange, that blue, and that green. Um, and you know I enjoy the coin just because it almost has problem-free surfaces. Uh, the major flaw with this coin, however, just like the Buffalo Nickels had, um, there's a weak strike on the hair there. Um, you can also see a weak strike on the breast feathers as well. Um, but I'm very uh, thankful to be able to hold a coin like this in hand just because of how beautiful it is. We hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys did enjoy today's video, please leave a like. Uh, comment what your favorite coin was uh, from this video. If you guys have anything interesting to share about Buffalo Nickels, please leave them down below. And do you agree, um, is there a difference between how uh, dealers approach coins to buy them and how collectors approach uh, coins to buy them? Uh, we'd be interested to hear what you have to say. Um, and like I said, if you guys are new, uh, please subscribe down below um, and hit the bell notification for more videos because we are coming out with them every week. Uh, we hope you guys have a happy new year and we will see you guys in the next video.